So I'd like to say words about this uh, um, phenomena that many of you know. I got it, I lost it. Meaning, at times, there can be openness, an ability to rest and abide quite effortlessly. There's a sense of space, openness, presence, love. And then other times, there's contraction. A feeling that you've lost that experience. And this can be very normal. It actually is the norm for most people. You can have an opening, a glimpse of truth. And that can last a moment, an afternoon, a week, a month, a year, or even years. And then there can uh, apparently be a closing down of that, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. We often notice that mm, in our life situation, in relationships, when we're triggered, when the psychological self is taken to its threshold to repress, to manage our experience, when it gets to that edge, that's usually when we close down. The heart closes down. And then we feel separate. There's a couple of metaphors that I feel are, are really uh, useful. that go along with this process. One is um, homeostasis. You see it in all biological structures. It's just this ability of the mind-body to find stability. Whatever's going on, it's always trying to find a balance, which is beautiful, it's fine, it's necessary. But when it comes to identity, that balance is fixation. And so this process is always going on in the background. It's always trying to refixate to find reference again. So I bring that up just as a something to keep in the back of the mind. You don't need to fight it. The identity, our consciousness, is going to constantly try to fixate. It fixates just as much in the contracted, normal experience as it does in the absolute. It's good, actually. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. So in that recognition, it can be useful to bring that into the inquiry in the sense of experience always fluxes, comes and goes. Sometimes the experience will last for a second. Sometimes it'll last for a day, weeks. But when that experience begins to go back to source, to dissolve, as all experience does, it arises and then it goes back in the source. It arises, goes back in the source. When it starts to die, dissolve, we can have this um, recognition of this homeostatic mechanism. And it's almost as if we can come into alignment with that and what I'm trying to convey here is that sense when the experience is trying to die and the identity is trying to grasp, our inquiry can just pick the fingers away from it a little bit. And the way we do that 
is these simple directives. Let the experience be. Part of that fixation is, it's a very innocent movement, but the mind comes in to fix, to heal, to fix, even to challenge, even to inquire. And that's all part of that. It looks good from the outside, but on the inside, it's just solidifying that. It's saying, I don't want to let go. I want to fix it instead of just letting it go. <laughs> Likewise, that quality of just allowing our experience to be, letting go of control internally, externally. But on this path, it's really about the internal. There's no distinction between external and external, but it's really about working with our experience. And letting it go, letting it be. The other metaphor that I wanted to bring in is addiction. In the sense of the detoxing. And when someone's coming off an addiction, that sense of the mind can say the craziest things to convince us, to soothe the pain. If you can imagine a heroin addict, they'll do almost anything to get the next hit. Likewise, our identity will do just about anything to remain alive. It can appear as a manifestation of wisdom. So it can say something so convincingly clear to you. Or likewise, it can spook you. If you open to this, what's going to happen? If you fully open to this emotion, what's going to happen? And it brings back the memory banks of every time you've been hurt or wounded. That's its proof. If you open, that will happen again. You'll be hurt. You'll die. Or likewise, you'll stay in that wisdom stance. Nothing bothers me, nothing bothers me, nothing bothers me. That's fixation as well. And so it's really important to have this sense of uh, acceptance for ourselves. And a letting go of judgment. Because it's just mind. And so if negative thoughts arise, scary thoughts, maybe even violent thoughts, let them be. Because they're all just hooks. They're all just hooks. And of course, at the root of these patterns is the survival mechanism. And that's not conceptual, that's hooked in with our mind-body, with our hormones, our neurotransmitters. And so when our identity, our ego structure, believes, if I open to this, I'll die, it will amplify the seeming truth of that by dumping all sorts of hormones into our system, cortisol, adrenaline, whatever it is, and vibrates us. 
And yet, at a certain point, it just needs to be seen. It's just the next hook. Are we going to take the bait? Are we going to try to fix it? Are we going to believe the mind when it says we're going to die? Is it true? Not does it feel true, because it will feel true. But is it true in the sense of, what if I just stay here? What will happen? Just one second longer, what will happen? If I open just one millimeter more, what will happen? And when it comes to core patterns, deep wounded patterns, core story, staying one second longer is much more profound than we may think. As our core patterns unwind, a lot of very wounded and negative emotions will arise. And so we need to give them space. We need to give them almost a sense of dignity, respect, in the sense of don't get in there with our inquiry to see through them too quickly. Allow them to be felt first. Allow them to be felt first. Let the inquiry, the leading tip of the inquiry, be the emotional body. And then once we've allowed that, we've felt very deeply. in those parts lots of space then that's when an inquiry like is it true that often will arise just on its own will just pop the bubble but it's a very it's almost like a yin way of doing it as opposed to yang kind of get right in there very soft very soft Soft, open heart, open heart, gentle, gentle, open, innocence. Innocence meets malice, meets rage, meets uh, self-hatred. What's on the other side of that is real love, unbreakable love. 